Let's consider this projection of a knotted sphere in another way. We see twice a thin tube passing through a thick one, changing color from blue to red or vice versa. Using tangles like these, plus tubes and cups, we can assemble the whole sphere like a construction toy. The spheres that can be built in this way are called ribbon spheres. Why do they have this name? Let's first see the corresponding situation in three dimensions. Place some discs in a plane and connect them with ribbons. The ribbons are attached to the borders of the discs. They are allowed to pass through discs if the disc cuts the ribbon in two pieces. They are not allowed to pass only half through the discs. The ribbons may be knotted, but they do not intersect each other. You obtain a surface living in three dimensions. Its edge is a knot, which is called ribbon knot, since it is constructed from discs and ribbons. We can inflate discs and ribbons to get ribbon knotted surfaces in four dimensions. The discs become spheres and the ribbons become tubes attached to the spheres. The tubes go through the spheres, passing once below and once above the spherical surface. This is the same as passing a thin tube through a thick one. There is yet another way to look at these tubes. Take two rings in three dimensions and pass one through the other. We can record a movie of this movement, a sequence of pictures. We take only a small number of pictures or frames that are enough to understand the movement. The ring on the right shrinks and goes below the one on the left, goes through it and comes out from above. Each frame is a picture of a three-dimensional scene, so we can represent it in two dimensions using color to encode the third coordinate. In other words, we turn each frame into a color projection of the rings at that specific moment. Now we render the whole scene in a four-dimensional space using the two coordinates of the planar frames, time and color. While the rings perform their movement, they sweep a tubular surface. The color of the surface is given by the relative height of the rings. In this way, we get exactly the fundamental piece in the ribbon construction toy. There is another movement that two rings can perform in space. They can trade places, passing externally to each other, instead of one through the other. As before, let's make a movie of this movement. We transform its frame into a chord projection. We 
we can also draw the tube picture. We can now deform the tubes and the movement of the rings, passing them in different ways. The tubes look like they pass through each other, but look at their colors, they are unlinked. All these tubes describe the same kind of knotting in four dimensions, or rather, the same unknot. We will now simplify our drawings to be able to describe ribbon surfaces more efficiently. We flatten one space coordinate, Z, and turn color into a space direction. Then, the tubes look like flat ribbons. Can we reconstruct the tube picture from the ribbons? Yes, copy the ribbons and color them according to their distance from our eyes. There will be some forbidden intersection, where the ribbons are both green. But this intersection disappears when we inflate the ribbons into tubes. This is a similar tangle, but not the same. Look at the colors. The thin tube passes through the thick one from above. Also the corresponding ribbons are different. We can highlight the difference between the two lines using arrows that record the color of the thin tube. It is very tempting to further simplify the representation using arcs as in a knot diagram. We add arrows to remember the color of the thin tube. The top row has an inverse, its image in a vertical mirror, a tangle which can be connected to it to give an unlinked tangle. The unlinking movement makes sense also in the ribbon picture, and it is like the master move too in the diagram picture. To get the usual diagrams, we will not draw the colored arrows, assuming that the thin tube is red on the left of the thick one. We want to find a ribbon notation and a diagram notation also for the tubes that we get from rings passing externally to each other. We slightly move the tubes in the fourth coordinate be able to turn the tubes into ribbons, changing the way to represent coordinates as before. Forget Z and turn color into a space coordinate. From the ribbons we can reconstruct the tubes. We do not know which ribbon is above in the Z direction, but it doesn't matter, since after inflation we get tubes that have different color, different Y coordinate. So we can pull one tube through the other in either way. Since these two pictures represent the same situation in four-dimensional space, we draw a diagram where there is no distinction between the two strands. This is called a virtual crossing, because the corresponding tubes do not intersect at all. The virtual crossing is inverse to itself. If we join the ends, we can move the tubes and the ribbons and the strands in the diagram into straight ones. The corresponding move in the diagram notation is called virtual Rademeister move 2. The diagrams are an easy representation of ribbon knotted tubes. Here is an example how to recover the tubes from a diagram. The strands are oriented. Remember our convention, the thin tube is red on the left of the thick one and blue on its right. Color the strands using this convention 
and double them, respecting colors. Draw the ribbons between the strands. And finally, inflate them to get tubes. We can also draw a broken surface projection. In other words, given crossings, virtual crossings and cups, we can draw the corresponding tubes in four dimensions. This means that we have defined a function, a way to go from diagrams to ribbon surfaces. Crossings are sent to interacting tubes, virtual crossings are sent to non-interacting tubes and endpoints translate into cups. We call it the tube function. Here is another example. This diagram translates into this knotted sphere. The tube function is interesting because there are some moves on diagrams that translate into isotopies of ribbon surfaces, movements that do not change the type of knotting. The moves are the Reidemeister moves, the virtual Reidemeister moves, which look the same but involve virtual crossings, and a few more. Two of them are similar to Reidemeister move 3. And the last two moves involve endpoints. It is easier to state the forbidden moves. A strand cannot pass below a virtual crossing and a cap cannot pass over a strand. We have already seen the translation of the Radiomeister 2 moves into isotopies of ribbon surfaces. Now we demonstrate another move. This move allows the strand to pass over a virtual crossing. We translate the diagrams into tubes in three space. And we find a movement in four dimensional space that allows to transform the two tangles into each other. The tube function was first defined by Shin Sato, a Japanese mathematician, in a paper in 2000. Our definition of the tube function has an issue. The rings that form the tubes can pass through each other in different ways. We have diagrams for some of them, but not for all of them. How can we draw a diagram for these tubes? Luckily, this is not hard. We can move the tubes without changing the type of the knotting. Then, the tangle can be represented as a combination of one regular and two virtual crossings. The same trick works also for the inverse crossing. So, we have a way to describe all possible interactions of the ribbon tubes just using regular and virtual crossings. In other words, the tube function is subjective. Given any ribbon surface, we can describe it using a diagram. It is still unknown whether this function is injective, that is, whether each four-dimensional movement of ribbon surfaces can be represented by a sequence of the moves on diagrams. No proof has been found yet that this is true, 
but also in a counterexample to show that this is false. Instead of the ribbon knottings of a sphere, we could consider different surfaces. The simplest is the donut. Some classification tables are currently being developed using the diagram notation, but there are not enough invariants yet to classify the ribbon knotted surfaces. Moreover, we did not even consider surface knots having triple points in the projection. This is the simplest sphere that requires triple points in all its projections. Again, we need invariants to classify this kind of knottings, but we also lack easy ways to represent these surfaces. One of the reasons why we know more about ribbon surfaces is that they can be described using diagrams, at least tentatively, through the tube function. So, we have a combinatorial, easier way to work on them. There is so much to discover about knotted surfaces.